Hi, I'm, I am Jennifer Letts and I'm here with Bennett at Thinkers Distillery in Jerusalem. Bennett, thank you for speaking with me. Such a pleasure. Could you please tell me what people can expect from a trip to Thinkers? So what you're going to do when you come here is you're going to learn all about alcohol production. People don't know what a distillery does. The first thing, the first thing that happens is that people walk into a distillery and goes, oh yeah, I, was, I, was, I saw how they make beer before. They're like, you know, the breweries and distilleries and wineries are different animals altogether. So the first thing you do is you learn what a distillery is. A distillery concentrates alcohol. Hard alcohol is made in a distillery. Nature pr produces alcohol of up to 16% maximum. Okay. And, and we won't go into the reasons for that. And a distillery basically concentrates that and turns it into something more as much as 96.5% alcohol. Okay. And this is what I'm drinking to have a fun time. Well, you know, you can drink anything you want to have a fun time, but, 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 <clears throat> but spirits are what most people want to drink. It's the hottest industry in the world, and it has been for very many years. And what is special about your spirits? We specialize in what, what we call furthering, which means figuring out what everybody else is doing and figuring out what we can do to make it better. And you do this very scientifically, yes? It's funny because it's all science. Hmm. You, know, if, you know, if you ask Picasso, why did he do this or why did he do that? He wouldn't give you a scientific answer. He would tell you, well, I like this color and I like this flirt. But here you're unabashedly just dealing with chemistry. And, if, and that's all you're dealing with. So, so you're always in the chemistry. You're always talking about what are, what are we doing with this alcohol because there are a lot of different kinds of alcohols. There are 13 different kinds of alcohols. What are we doing with this? Like drink? Uh, not in the drink that you're drinking here, but in every other drink you have. Okay, explain that more. So I'm having a vodka tonic at, you know, my local bar in Harlem. And you're telling me there's a whole mix of alcohols other than... Ethanol, which is the primary one. That's correct. And in your alcohols and your spirits, I don't have that. You you have far fewer. We don't take all of the all of them out. These these are these are what are called in, in chemistry terms congeners. A congener is nothing more than a molecule that's so similarly shaped to another molecule that they become they become attached to each other. Oh. That's nice. Yes. They're like friends, except some of them are really awful. Okay. Like, like, like acetone, although acetone has its purposes in the universe. I'm not trying to take away nail polish remover from its f function. Thank you. But it's not something you actually want to put in your mouth and swirl around and swallow. Yet, all of the spirits out there have acetone in them. Ours does not. Methanol, which has no taste and flavor, but it is probably the cause of hangover. And uh, so it would make me go blind if I have enough bet you set. Well, if if somebody decides that they're not going to follow the rules of proper distilling, yes, you will go blind. And there are stories that come out all the time. In fact, in Iran recently, you know, several hundred people died from drinking methanol. So you're taking out the acetone, you're taking out the meth methanol. methanol. And why do I care? Why does that make it better for me as the one tasting your delightful beverages? Well, because, you know, acetone, for example, and we're just talking about one of, of many alcohols that we removed, uh, creates an imbalanced drink. You, you taste the acetone. So what you try to do is you try, you know, you, you, you're no longer enjoying it. If you've had a really cheap vodka, it's completely imbalanced. You, you know, you were a cheap tequila. Why, why do people drink tequila with, you know, with, with, with uh, salt around the rim with a lime on in order to mask over the flavors of the imbalance that are in a bad tequila. Um, the same thing with vodka. Why do people put vodka in the freezer in order to mask over the imperfections? You would, if you put my vodka in a freezer, you're not, it's not going to taste any better. Now, your vodka tastes like a drink. It has layers to it. Yeah. It was delicious. Yeah. And Thank you. I shouldn't say Thank yeah. You. I shouldn't say yeah. <laughs> not in my, that's not modest. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and I know you don't want to make health claims, but am I less likely to be hungover after drinking a alcohol with less additional, well, a spirit, I'm sorry, with less additional alcohols in? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I mean, because the, you metabolize the alcohols at different, at different speeds, and some of them you metabolize quite cleanly. After all, you metabolize quite cleanly, and it goes through your, your liver and your blood, and it's out. But methanol, if it causes blindness and death, clearly is not one that metabolizes well. Yeah, I don't want to drink that if I have the choice. Nope. Okay, so people can come, they can visit the distillery, and 
what is the experience? You, do you do tours? Can I come with my Tinder date? What's the process? So the answer is you can come with anybody you want. We even have children in here. We serve them, we serve them you know, what we call in America, Shirley Temples. Yeah, of course. Yeah, they, they all love it. Uh, but what you, what you expect to get is a real education. You'll, you'll leave really understanding what a distillery is, how alcohol is made, how alcohol is concentrated, what a still does, which is that machine that's sitting in the back over there. You know, what, why, why we use a still, there are other ways, there are other ways of concentrating alcohol, like freezing it, but we don't have, you know, we live in a warm climate, we're not going to freeze things. Um, you know, and, and, and how it's all made and what we did to take everybody else's, you know, concepts and recipes to freeze them. Okay. And they get a few good drinks, I assume as well. Yeah. Everybody leaves pretty happy. Okay. Yeah, to, to the dates, especially. And, um. During these past uh, six months with the war going on, um, have you still been getting tourists come in? Have Israelis been coming? What has business been like? Well, for the first three months, you know, from October to December, business fell off a cliff completely. We we lost we lost an enormous amount of money. Uh, it started to pick up in January, and now in 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 March and April, we're back to where we were. In fact, even better, uh, business is stronger. But we, we, we've been using the time to, to be as, as supportive as we possibly can uh, for our troops and for the people who have, uh, who have suffered as a result of the war that, that we're experiencing. Uh, we've, we started with a beef jerky program. The beef jerky? What is a beef jerky program? I don't know. One day I, was, I just got it into my head that Israelis don't really know what beef jerky is and that beef jerky is the ultimate power uh, food. It is. Because, sure. because okay. carbohydrates make you a little bit sleepy, whereas, whereas pure beef or really, really good beef gives you the energy and fills you up. It makes you feel like you're full, but it, it doesn't cloud your mind. Now the soldiers are going out into the field and they want to be full, but they don't want to have clouded brains. And I said, okay, let's start making beef jerky. And a lot of people had exactly the same idea. Really? Yeah. And, and there were a lot of people making beef jerky, and there were campaigns, you know, fund our beef jerky. So we started with our own beef jerky recipe. We call it Burby beef jerky. <laughs> and then I had to find, like, commanders of different units to give it to. And they thought it was great. They just couldn't believe what we were doing. And then I became friendly with the commanders of the units. And I said, why don't you bring your units here? And they're like, no, no, we don't want to get them drunk. I said, but they have two days off every now and then for us relaxation, bring them. And we started getting, you know, all sorts of, uh, all, all reserve units. We didn't get any of the regular units. All reserve units started coming in here, you know, 20, 30 people at a time. And, and we all cried together. We all cried together because, because, first of all, they appreciated the love that we were giving them, and, and I appreciated the love that they're giving the country. And since then, in these past months this last month in march and now going into april has business be again to pick up again what do you see it's never been more powerful we're selling we're selling in israel three times what we sold before the war and what do you think is behind that people just got used to our products we've only been in the market for a year and a half and you know people before we were just kind of like some kind of curiosity mm-hmm. then people started discovering us and they started loving us and then we became the go-to drink for them and what about visitors? Are you seeing as many visitors coming and having the tours us? Yeah, I mean, basically in September before the war, we did about we had about a thousand visitors, and uh, in March we had the same number. Okay. And then my last question: It's great to have the tours and the visitor center. Uh, is there somewhere where someone could just go and have? Cocktail. So we're, visitors coming in and maybe do not. So we're six hundred locations in Israel. In liquor stores, bars, restaurants, hotels, oh. you, you'd, you'd, have, you'd have a hard time missing us. So what am I asking for then? I'm going into bar and I'm asking for... Yes, what sir, thinkers. For thinkers. Thinkers. Everybody just knows us as thinkers. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you very much for speaking with me. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you for the drinks. Well, I am Jennifer Lux with Insider Travel Report, and we're here at Thinkers Distillery. Have a nice day.